everyone, I'm Dr. Mesh Seibel. I'm so excited to be here in Orlando, Florida at the annual meeting of the North American Menopause Society. We've got experts gathered here from all over the world to bring you the latest information on menopause. I'm so excited to share this information with you. So, um, hi, I'm Pooja Mehta. I work at the Barbara Streisand Women's Heart Center at Cedar sinai Heart Institute. And we're here today at the North American Menopause Society meeting in Orlando, Florida. I just heard a fantastic presentation and I uh, would appreciate it if you would just briefly tell us a little bit about what you had to say. So um, the main uh, message of my talk is to bring awareness that a heart disease remains the number one killer in women and um, the risk factors for heart disease such as diabetes and obesity are rampant in women and more women die from cardiovascular disease compared to um, all other causes of death such as lung cancer, breast cancer, stroke and COPD combined. So it's a critical issue in, our, in healthcare today and every uh, provider needs to be aware of that. Um, Women tend to present uh, with atypical symptoms when they're having um, a heart attack, such as uh, profound fatigue, shortness of breath, and they, um, you know, uh, less than half of them will have your classic chest pain. So it's often missed, and so we need to be aware of that. Um, the risk factors tend to be um, the newer risk factors that have been added compared to our traditional risk factors such as high cholesterol, high blood pressure, sedentary lifestyle, poor diet, are autoimmune disorders such as lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and uh, pregnancy related disorders such as gestational diabetes, uh, pregnancy induced hypertension, and preeclampsia. So if women who have any of these things are at more risk of having heart disease. Exactly. And even a heart attack. Yes, absolutely. And um, the, the critical issue also is that often when a woman presents with a heart attack and she's seen in the emergency room and evaluated by uh, physicians, uh, when she has a cardiac cath uh, where they look at the arteries to see if there are any blockages, women often uh, don't have a blockage. So over 50% of women who get a cath will not have a blockage, but they are still having persistent chest pain and persistent symptoms. So this is putting a small catheter through a vein, maybe in a leg or some other part, an arm or leg, and they're going to thread the cath into the heart arteries and actually put a little bit of dye in to see if the big arteries are blocked. Exactly. And and um, when that's done, traditionally for men, you'll see a, a blockage which can be opened up with a stent. But often in women, uh, there is no a specific blockage found. And so they're falsely reassured that they don't have heart disease. Is that because small blood vessels are the ones that are involved? Exactly. So um, over 50% of people, it's been estimated of over 50% of women who have this open arteries on, on an angiogram or a heart cath, they may have small vessels uh, dysfunction. So that's called microvascular disease and microvascular dysfunction. And uh, it puts them at a higher risk. So it's important to um, discuss when you're having persistent chest pain with your provider. So even if a woman is, goes in and she realizes that she may not have the big chest pain, but she's having nausea or maybe discomfort at the angle of her jaw, or she's having just upset stomach or any of another symptoms, just doesn't feel good, tired. She gets a cardiac cath even, mm -hmm. and they put dye in. She still could be having heart disease, and she ought to just keep persisting. Absolutely. That's correct. Are there any particular other messages that you want to make women aware of? Um, women should know their numbers, so, so they should know their blood pressure, their cholesterol numbers, they should uh, continue their physical activity despite the high stress job and taking care of children, try to make time for yourself, uh, don't ignore your symptoms, and specifically if a woman thinks that she's having a heart attack, don't be afraid or shy to call 911, because women often feel that if they call 911 and if it's not a heart attack, then it's an embarrassment and it's an embarrassing situation so um, women should uh, be aware to not uh, not feel that way and go ahead and call 911 if you think you're having a heart attack so bottom line women are more susceptible to heart disease than they may think or realize they should keep on testing if they think they're having a heart attack they should call 911 and even if their arteries look normal on those arteriograms don't re continue to realize it's possible you could have heart disease in the small vessels. Exactly. That's the message. Thank you so very much for You're talking. Welcome.